Welcome to wonderful uh, Scotland. Uh, we uh, have this wonderful weather for everyone. How many folks are, are from Scotland in the audience today? So actually not, not, a, not a huge number, less, less than half. So for those of you who aren't, uh, I heard a few of you this morning were complaining about uh, the weather to me, which I thought was ridiculous. Uh, but you know, uh, what I was told is you have to get one of these jumpers which is what they call sweaters uh, over here. But uh, you get a jumper, it, it, it helps you with the weather, so I very much get, this is 100% Scottish wool I've got on right now. Um, but we're very excited to be here. I first want to thank our uh, diamond sponsors, Intel and Microsoft, for uh, helping us make this event possible. Let's give a hand to those folks. We, are, we also have just an amazing amount of content this week. You know, one of the great things about this event is over the course of several days, you're going to be able to go to a wide variety of very deep technical sessions, uh, sessions on all kinds of topics. And uh, we have a program committee and a set of track chairs that ha help make that happen. M maybe 10 years ago, uh, I recused myself from any kind of selection committee for conference talks. Because if I was in charge of uh, the conference talks, this event would not be three, four days, it would be like four weeks, because I would just accept every single talk. They're so amazing. But I want to uh, thank uh, Nithi Ruff, Donnie Burkholz, Greg Crowhartman, Tim Bird, Kate Stewart, John O'Bacon, Brian Lyles, Robin Bergeron, and Frank Rohr, who uh, helped put all this together. Let's give them a big hand. I see Tim right there. I see Jono somewhere out there. Uh, it, it's a lot of work. Uh, I also want to take a moment to call out our diversity and inclusion initiatives that we have here at the event. Uh, so, you know, one of the things that we're trying to do within our, our communities is, is uh, the Linux Foundation believes that diverse communities are the best communities. And there's like reams of scientific research uh, and studies that uh, prove this to be true. Uh, and to that end, uh, we uh, are trying to encourage more of that in open, not just our op uh, communities, but in all open source communities. Uh, so we've created a diversity empowerment summit uh, with three days of talks here uh, covering a wide range of topics. So uh, I encourage folks to get involved in that and help make our community stronger and better. We also have a women in open source lunch uh, a diversity social, which was last night, so I want to thank all of you who attended that. Uh, we also have free childcare at all of our events. How many people bring their kids to Linux Foundation events? Anyone? Anyone? There we go, we got one. Uh, <laughs> one guy. So uh, I always bring my daughter when she's not uh, attending school, she's 10 years old, I do bring her to uh, our events and, and many of you have met her. But I really encourage all of you to take advantage of this. We wanna make these events family friendly, especially for ones in the summer, our open source North America events, ones in China and Japan. Bring your kids. We have coding workshops for them uh, at our last event in Vancouver. Uh, even Linus Torvald stopped by, met the kids, gave them some uh, tips on coding. So it's something that I think is really uh, a great opportunity. And again, totally free for uh, all attendees, including childcare at the evening events as well. So you don't feel like you, you know, have to duck out and miss out on the social event as well. Uh, we'll help take care of you on that as well. Uh, we have nursing rooms, communication and pronoun stickers, much more. Uh, check out uh, our event uh, signage and uh, the programs to, to understand what we've got there. Uh, so finally, we also have a, a strict code of conduct here. Uh, if anyone is concerned, uh, please approach uh, our event staff uh, and we have a, a policy about how we handle those things as well. We'll address them right away. Uh, so with that, I'd like to spend a few minutes talking about uh, what the Linux Foundation is working on, uh, give you an update about kind of how we're seeing things in the world, uh, and then introduce uh, our speakers for today. who are gonna talk about a wide range of topics from new open source initiatives uh, to legal matters and so forth. But, you know, in 2018, open source continues to just make a big impact. The fact that we have so many people at this event in Europe, uh, I think is a testimony to that. This year at Linux Foundation events all over the world, from Asia to Europe to North America, we will have over 35,000 attendees uh, across uh, all of our events. Uh, it's just amazing to see the number of people who participate. 
Uh, and obviously Linux continues to grow uh, and has now become uh, the most uh, important software platform uh, really in the history of computing. It, it's just amazing and is a testimony to how powerful the concept of open source is that Linux now represents in some markets literally 100% market share uh, up from you know, zero uh, not that long ago uh, as history goes. But today, you know, one of the things that I wanted to talk about briefly is how the Linux Foundation itself is much more than just Linux. Many of you uh, are here today uh, to participate in tracks and initiatives uh, that are uh, either built on top of Linux or uh, things that aren't even related to, to Linux itself but run on, on multiple platforms. You know, we have initiatives around cybersecurity. H how many people here knew that the Linux Foundation's Let's Encrypt project is the biggest certificate authority in the world? How many people knew that? H how many people here have actually used Let's Encrypt? That is awesome. That's so good to see. So app get Let's Encrypt. Hopefully it's just that easy. Uh, the idea here is to make TLS sort of the de facto uh, for the web. And that's going to make our lives more secure. That's going to make uh, uh, our privacy better. We also have our core infrastructure initiative that's helping to find uh, critical open source projects that are important to society and help them improve their application security. In the networking sector, we have projects that are helping automate uh, the next generation of global service providers' networks getting ready for 5G deployments. In cloud computing, has anyone heard of Kubernetes? The Kubernetes, it's a thing. Uh, and it's not just Kubernetes. We have uh, Cloud Foundry at the Linux Foundation, which is getting uh, incredible traction in, in enterprise computing. Uh, and then CNCF has its entire family of companies uh, that are around it making solutions for uh, the cloud. Uh, in automotive, uh, our automotive grade Linux initiative, which was started years ago, is now in millions of production automobiles. It's the in-vehicle experience for uh, many, many vehicles. Uh, Daimler, Chrysler commercial vans here in Europe, uh, Toyota automobiles throughout the world. Uh, we have initiatives in blockchain. Uh, our Hyperledger initiative is sort of, think of this as uh, Bitcoin without the Bitcoin. So it's a non-cryptocurrency blockchain initiative that's being deployed in supply chain management. It's used for the tracking the diamond supply chain in the Kimberley process to root out blood diamonds as they enter the system uh, in the diamond supply chain. It's used in financial services. It's used uh, by one of the biggest uh, financial healthcare companies in the United States and many, many more. We have uh, efforts in edge computing. Zephyr, I want to give a shout out to. This is an RTOS project that we have. Uh, there's tracks on Zephyr here today. Uh, the Yocto project uh, is being used as basically one of the de facto embedded build tools for uh, Linux and embedded systems. Uh, and then in the web, how many people here have ever used Node? A few? Node.js? All right, it's all good. So we're really expanding beyond that. And we've been growing an amazing amount this year. And again, I think this is testimony to how fast open source is growing. Today, we have over 1,300 members, uh, thousands of developers, tens of thousands of developers contributing to these projects, creating a ton of value. In 2018, we're, we continue to this day to add a new member of the Linux Foundation every single day. What that means for all of you is that as you come in and participate in our projects and contribute code to them and use them to create products and services, we're going to be able to match you with other companies and organizations who want to work on the same thing uh, with your organization together. And you know, open source writ large beyond the Linux Foundation continues to grow and accelerate. Uh, on, uh, I think this, this actually is probably dated. I think there are now about 78 million repositories on GitHub today. Just thousands of projects being created, tens of thousands of new versions being created every single day. You know, open source is just such a critical part of how things get built. And the best way for, I think, everyone to explain this uh, to their friends, to their family, is to think about when, when people say, why is this open source so important, to describe how today, when you make any kind of application, it's kind of like making a sandwich. Uh, think of it as an open source sandwich where you, know, you choose a framework kind of at the bottom layer. This could be Node.js, React, you name it. You then write some custom code to build that application for whatever you want to do, maybe to automate something or to create a web application. You then go and use a whole variety of, uh, choose among tens of thousands of open source libraries that have kind of already solved the problem that you've been trying to solve to enable your particular application. And what you get in this sandwich is most of the code is open source. 
Like, this is really what we continue to see at the Linux Foundation, is the vast majority of actual code in any software product or service continues to be open source. The key is, for all of us to think about, is that 10%, the stuff that matters to your customers, your users, or to you, is really the most important code, right? Because that's the code that really is solving the problem you need to solve. Uh, and it would be insane to go and try and recreate the entire sandwich from scratch by yourself. That's why open source is so important. Now what's important in this context is that at those layers of open source that you're utilizing to create your application, that you have code that you can actually count on for a long period of time. That that code is released at a regular cadence, that there's a degree of application security that you can rely on for that code, that you know that the code will be maintained and up to date. And that is really what the focus of the Linux Foundation is to do. What we do is we work with all of our communities, the, the projects that really matter to building a lot of the modern infrastructure that runs you know, society's you know, automotive systems or financial sector, and help make them sustainable over long periods of time. Our job is really to focus on the upstream open source projects that you're all here to talk about today. You know, how do we enable those communities to succeed, bring developers together at events like this to accelerate the development, uh, make sure that the legal frameworks that govern the intellectual property are clean and can be counted on. And what happens is if those upstream projects are really good, then people who are members of the foundation or people who aren't members, there's no requirement, take that code and they create commercial products and services. It could be a mobile device, an automobile system, uh, it could be a financial application, you name it. But they basically take that code and create products or services, right? Government institutions could use the code to create tools to make more transparent governance, right? Uh, to uh, improve the productivity, maybe, of that particular society. But see, when you take that code and you create a product or service, what we also hope, help ha ha hope happens is that the companies who are offering those products and services can create some profit for themselves and others. And what's key here is when you are able to have people leveraging open source capture value for themselves, what we've seen now over a very long period of time, more than you know, 20 years, is that some of that value that's captured through the profits from creating these products or services, or maybe through governments who have better, more efficient governments, gets reinvested back into the project. Largely in the form of developers, like many of you here, who continue to contribute to that collective project, to the commons, because you don't want to maintain all of this source code by yourself, right? That 90% of the code that just you know, is shared and rightfully should. And then you get better projects, you get better products as a result, the next release, the next product you build, begets more profit and value, he gets better projects, better products, more profit, and you have this sustainable economic positive feedback loop. This is really the trick to open source. I get asked this question all the time, well, if uh, open source software is free, how can anybody make money off of it? And, the, and this is the answer. When you have organizations, companies, be able to take this code, build an Android device, create a web application, make some money off it, then reinvest, it is the definition of being able to help others while you help yourself at the same time. And we think that's really important. And what really makes this positive feedback loop spin fast is not just bringing one developer at a time into our projects, which is something that I think we all try to do as good stewards of open source projects, but at the foundation what we're seeing is a new trend where wholesale industries are starting to realize just how powerful open source can be to help them improve their entire industry. And I want to give you a few examples of what that looks like. Uh, about a month and a half ago, we announced uh, at our open source, American, uh, open source North America event the Academy Software Foundation. How many people here have heard of the Motion Picture, Picture Academy? So, I mean, how many of you heard of the Oscars? Everyone heard of the Oscars, right? They're the, this, the, the Motion Picture Academy is the home of the Oscars. But in addition to the Oscars, uh, they also are in charge of the uh, science and technology that helps make motion pictures. And today, almost all of the profits in the motion picture industry, the film industry, 
whether it's Avatar or Star Wars or you name it, comes from computer graphics, comes from CGI films and special effects. Literally like the first 138 most profitable movies ever all were animation and computer graphics driven. You have to get all the way to 138 to get to an actual live action movie uh, where there was high profitability. Mamma Mia was the, the 138th most profitable. Uh, but what the, the Academy and companies like DreamWorks, Disney, uh, Google, Intel, SideFX Studios, all these organizations decided is, for the production pipeline software that we all use, we want to collectively develop this in open source. Because we're not in the, so the technology industry per se, we're all in the storytelling industry. And if we all collectively work in open source on this production pipeline software, we're going to be able to move faster, and the result for all of you is going to be better movies. The CTO of uh, Lucasfilms and, and president of Industrial Light and Magic even went so far to say, like, this is where in the film industry we're going to go find talent for software. So if you want to get your foot in the door in Industrial Light and Magic or work on the next Star Wars film, go work on this project, and that's really going to be your resume and entree into that world. It's a pretty powerful thing. In telecommunications, the Linux Foundation worked with some of the biggest operators in the world, AT&T and China Mobile, to get together to solve a problem to automate their networks. Today, a modern telecommunication network with 5G coming in has so many devices connecting to it, so much data, that in order to meet the demand, these service providers, you know, China Mobile as an example, which has 850 million subscribers, that's just people connecting to their network, they need to automate their network. And these carriers decided to do it in open source. They thought they could get to market faster, create better innovation, better automation through our open network automation platform. And today they're doing it. This has already been released. It's in production in several operators who are now saving billions of dollars on their production infrastructure that runs our modern communication networks. In the auto sector, uh, we worked with uh, about a dozen of the world's largest car makers to help them compete with the navigation and entertainment experience in the car, which was rapidly moving to you know, a, a, an Android or iPhone device that people would just put via Velcro onto the dashboard, right? Car companies didn't have a lot of software experience, and they decided to get together in open source to create that in-vehicle experience. Again, today this is in 20 million production automobiles, and it's really helping raise the bar for the automotive experience. In this next coming rounds of new cars, you're going to see a dramatic increase in innovation and a much better experience uh, for a modern automobile. And obviously, cloud native uh, computing is, is a, a new paradigm for how applications get developed. Google approached us uh, about three years ago and said, listen, we want to show the world by giving them technology we use to run Google a better way to build cloud applications. And that technology, we're going to call it Kubernetes. And it makes it a lot easier to embrace the whole DevOps, container, and microservice movement by providing a consistent management layer, a consistent way to deploy containers. Uh, and we want the entire industry to essentially take that on as a de facto standard. And so at the Linux Foundation, what we did was we went out and did it. And today, there are uh, now over 300 members. This is a little out of date of the Cloud Native Computing Foundation. 53 Kubernetes certified implementations, service providers all over the world. All the top cloud providers have this. So you can be assured that when you use container technology, that Kubernetes provides you a level of portability across different implementations, whether it's through your own infrastructure or through a public cloud service provider. Something that the computer industry has been trying to work on for years and years and years. So what you can see here is several examples of we, where we worked with wholesale industries to create open source projects. But the question now is where are we going to go from here? And energy is the next big sector uh, that the Linux Foundation is going after. 
Uh, we are working with a variety of partners in the energy and utility industry. And I would like to uh, introduce the person who is working on our energy effort today, Shuli, to the stage to talk about uh, this exciting new effort. Please welcome Shuli Goodman.